So we're learning about transformers. This is an iron core with a primary circuit. We're looping around the core on one side. This loop is not connected to my secondary loop. There's no conductors in between there. There's no electron sharing in the bat. But they are kind of connected. How are they connected? Through the iron. Yeah, through the iron. And what goes through the iron? Either electrons or electrons. Electrons. Current. Yeah, current. current. No. no. Oh, oh, uh, 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 magnetic field. Magnetic field. So when we put current through this coil, that's going to induce a magnetic field. And that magnetic field will line up the dipoles in the iron. And so it'll create a magnetic field over here. Now, just having a field, as we just said, does not create a current here. But if that field is changing, then it will create uh, an EMF, a voltage, and current. And so you will now be able to measure a voltage in the secondary coil. The number of loops in your coil matters. If I double my number of loops, I will double my voltage. So uh, Edward and others were right when they said this is going to measure 6 volts. Here. That's correct. So we would say our NP over NS. Uh, so this is my, my primary number of loops over my secondary number of loops. Or we could do it the other way around as well. Is equal to VP over VS. And so you can flip those as well. So if this is 2 to 1, then the voltage will be 2 to 1. Is my voltage increasing or decreasing? Increasing. Increasing. So this is called a step up transformer. And Ivy will want you to know what that means. If the voltage is going up, we call that a step up. If the voltage is coming down, it's a step down. And this is very, very important in our world. Um, what does this contraption allow us to do? Arlo. High voltage wires. Good. The wire high voltage wire is nice to have. Ali. So you minimize your loss. Good. Perfect. So we can send the same amount of power, but if it's higher voltage, what gets lower? Current. Current. And current is what creates the friction in the wire. So if we load each electron with a lot of energy, we can send less of them. Does that make sense? It's like packing our dump trucks full of stuff. But there's less trucks on the road, so we have less traffic. If it's V equals IR, then if V goes up and R stays the same, then I has to go down. Yeah, that part is tricky. So let's talk about that a little bit. The next question is, what is this current? Take 20 seconds and discuss it amongst yourselves. What do you think this is? How do you get it? Just discuss it amongst yourselves for a minute. Good, I'm hearing a few of you arrive at the proper way to do this. Can we, with, if we don't know anything over here, could we just find the current on that? No. no. Could we 
Can we just get the resistance of this coil and no. find the current? No. 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 It, it, this is weird because even though this is not connected with a conductor, this is still kind of pushing through this resistance over here. It, we're changing to magnetic field and back, but we're still shoving it through there. And so we have to use this resistance first. You find the current in this loop. And once you know this current in this loop, your power, if your transformer is ideal, they're not ideal, but they're pretty efficient. Then your power here and there have to be the same. Why, what, what really has to be conserved? Energy. Energy. We don't have to conserve voltage or current or resistance or anything like that, but we have to we have to conserve energy. And most of the time, we're running this for long periods of time, so we don't want to calculate the total energy. We want the power, which is energy over time. Uh, so let's do that. What is my current going to be like on the 600. right side of the loop? It's going to be V over R, right? So. 6 over 10 times 7 is negative 3. There's 10 times 7 is 3. Yeah, so 600 over 10, which is 60. What? What? No, just trust. Isn't it that? Yes. Oh, wait. What? Is that right? Wait, isn't it, isn't it kilo ohms to ohms 10 to the negative 3? No, no, K no, is 1,000. Ten, that's 10,000 ohms. Let, you know what, let's, um, oh, have you already written Wait, this no, down? Wait, can't, can't you, for this equation, also add I primary over I secondary? Let's, um, let's do it this way. Let's say this is, sorry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna change these voltage numbers. Let's say we have a hundred volts over here. What are what's going to be my voltage on the other side? Good. So this is going to be two. What did he say? Two hundred. Two hundred. Uh, yes, two hundred. And so, don't call it out. Fear out. I'm looking at you. Calculate in your mind or on your calculator what the current is. I know you know it, just relax. So this would be the IS, the current in the secondary. I am glad that you're engaged. You need a, you need a filter, a little bit stronger filter. <laughs> I, I calculated like a... So you couldn't do it. I think Bayrad has like a, a gate voltage, like a capacitor has. There's like a certain amount of pressure and then it just opens up. But it's up to... And then it's just... close to it. The frequency is pretty high too. <laughs> Who's got an answer? 0.02, 0.02. Carl, what's the answer? Oh, he's filming. Sorry. Carlo, what's the answer? Okay, how would you do it? What are you looking at? Cambridge. He's looking at Cambridge. This is my ID. I'm looking at Cambridge. It's very, it is very beautiful. It's it's nice, yeah. Yeah. This time of year, we could we should do a class trip. We should like a university tour. If we were a private school, I could take you on all of them. We could go to Harvard, and Stanford, and Berkeley. We go to Cambridge, and Oxford, and yeah, go to Australia. My brother's going to Seattle. So pretty. And it's so, so nice. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. <laughs> okay, so it's 200 over 10,000, which would be uh, 0. 0.02. Oh, yeah. 0. 0. Uh, uh, what, what's the unit of this? Kiana, how did I get this? Yeah, that divided by this. Voltage divided by... Why am I using this voltage and not the primary voltage? 
Yeah, within this loop, V still equals IR, Ohm's law holds up, Wait, right? Could yes, Fred? Can we get like a question where we have to move the loop law and junction law with the transform? You could, but I won't give it to you. And I don't think IV would either. So if there's like separate loops in each, it would like get a little... If, if you start doing stuff over here, then it gets really funky. So we generally don't do that. Uh, so V over R, in this case 0.02, and now let's bring that over here. If you think in terms of power, well, somebody tell me, what is my power here in the secondary loop? It's four, isn't it? 200 volts times 0.02 amps. So my power in my secondary loop is four watts. So four over 200 equals... What's going to be different with the power on this side and the power on the primary side? It should be the same. My transformer is ideal. We're going to lose a little bit to heat. These things do get hot, but they, they work pretty well. So let's say that our power in our primary is also four watts. We don't lose so anything. Four over would equal... This is going to be, uh, <laughs> I is going to be 0 0.04. What do you notice about those two currents? This times right. So I double my voltage. And what happens to my current? It's halved. Okay, so if we if we want to, we can put here I secondary over I primary. That's right. So it's it's just flipped the current. Um, and you could just say, up there I put just ones and twos. But these are uh, proportional and then the current is inverse. Okay. I think that's pretty good. So, this is very, very practical in our world. This is what, uh, the thing I've said before, that I don't think it was on the video, but I put a little uh, battery one-way cell. That's gonna get you nothing. You have to have changing current here to get the flux changing over here to give you a voltage in the, EMF, in the EMF in the secondary coil. So if somebody says uh, just one cell or a battery, what's your secondary voltage? It's zero. IB may ask you that. Edison wanted to run all our power, Thomas Edison, inventor of the light bulb, he wanted to do everything with DC. And uh, Nikola Tesla, that guy, he knew that that was going to be impractical because you can't use this with a DC current. Is that Elon's No. Decidedly <laughs> not. Apparently, uh, we'll have to talk about Elon Musk on video. <laughs> I don't know what's gonna happen. Uh, Nikola Tesla said, we gotta have AC current. We have to have the current going forward and back, up and down, so that we can use these, so that we can transmit power at super high voltages. So most of our power comes from big uh, hydroelectric dams. So Site C, Williston Lake, things like that. Dams that are like way out, like WAC bedded dams, like I don't know how far from here, but it's hundreds of kilometers. So to get that power to us in the lower mainland, we gotta transport it at super high voltage, 100,000 volts. Um, some places, million volts. Um, and then it's really efficient to trans transmit. But what's the problem with having such high voltage? If people die, right? It's bad. It's like electricity. And so we have transformers like this in those gray buckets on the on the telephone lines, because those even those neighborhood ones are ten thousand volts at the upper lines, and then we bring it down to the one ten, one twenty that's going into your house. So does it all get turned into heat like instantly? No. 
Then you wouldn't be able to do anything in your house. You wouldn't be able to charge your phone or turn on the lights. So, describe to the person beside you, take 10 seconds each, what happens from the hydroelectric dam to your house? Go. If you have 60 hertz here, you have 60 hertz there. If you have 100 hertz here, you have 100 hertz there. There's no, there's no getting away from that. It's an old thing. Because the flip flop of the current is the same. You can't change the amount. Yeah, definitely. Because that, that's not nice. Because the, the back and forth force, it, it is magnetic, right? It's an actual force. So the thing can. And that's why you hear when you flip a transformer on, if it's not built really well, you'll hear this like, like it makes a noise, right? Okay, uh, for us, tell us, what happens? So basically water goes down, it hits the coil through magnetic field that makes AC power. Good. And then as it travels through wires, it goes into transformers, so there's more voltage and less current. So step like, up or step down? Step up. Good. Because the less current, the less like, heat that gets generated, so like you can send more energy with less of electrons through more voltage. Good. And then once it reaches your house, you can see more of the What what happens? That's a pretty good explanation. You have your generator, turns the coil, well, you get AC power, you have a big okay. transformer station at the dam that's our huge transformers that are stepping up the voltage. Then we put them out in those big, you know, the big high towers with the you see them out in the Fraser Valley and they're all over the place. Oh, on the, on the hillside here. And you send that long distances at super high voltages. And then where does it go here, like first? To a substation. It goes to a substation. So have you seen those places with the fence? John Lawson. And you got all the, right? Yeah, John Lawson. Don't climb that fence, ever. Uh, what's inside that? Is there, is there a step down? Yes, that's a step down. So we're stepping down from our transmission voltage, 100,000 whatever volts, down to 10,000, something that we can safely put out into the neighborhood at lower heights. Oh, so the bigger the like, wire poles are, they can carry more voltage. That's why like, our neighborhood is a smaller one. Well, the bigger the cable, the more power it can transmit. Um, but the power stays constant. The power stays constant, but we can have more voltage, right? It's the current that limits the size of your wire. Uh, and so the substation brings it down to 10,000 volts. And then you have some pretty thick aluminum wires up there, but not like massive. And then how do we get it down to the safe voltage for your house? There, there's another step down transformer. That's right, Alex. And those, those are the gray buckets. And then that goes down your street or whatever. And that'll go to a dozen houses or so. Okay, good. That's transformers. Did I miss anything? Does that make sense? I'm sort of. Is this all there is to it? That's all there is to it.